Holy Manuel eyes, Lassia Ja, Rastafari. Blessed love, we do give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life. Glorify and bright is the last and first. Give thanks to the holy meditation provided. Give thanks to the tree of life. Give thanks to the chalice. Bless us as we partake of such in your holy name. Uplift the spirits and thoughts. Let the holy one of Israel be exalted, prophet, priest, and king. Holy Manuel, I, Selassie, I, Ja, Rastafar, I, this love, and As we light the Chalwa, we welcome you to Chalice Talk. This is how we do it every time we gather. Have your child where you come and sit with us here in the tiger's nest. The moment of reasoning and meditation and inspiration. No fast forwarding, no skipping the minutes. Just get your ancients and light up and prepare to elevate with us. We have a wonderful session today. Let's elevate. Chalice talk. Thanks for your presence. time if this is the first time joining us for chalice talk this is how it's done you could definitely order your chalices as well of course email me priestisaac27 at gmail.com and we'll definitely tell you exactly how you could get it shipped straight to your door so you can join us in chalice talk and we elevate together do have a wonderful session today and as I said this is just the uplifting moment meditate with us as we elevate as we're going into the Sabbath day we're already prepared for such with all the joy When you come into the tiger's nest specifically for chalice talk, you make up your mind to spend some time. Not necessarily the the longest or the most uh, extensive program, but it can go any which way because it's a meditation program. It is a program where we go where the spirit carries us. Sometimes we do not have a topic until the topic is done. But for sure, we already decided that we will be speaking about respecting the elders. Chalice talk. Naya Bingi. Family, 
with me, myself, the Honorable Princess, Honorable Prince. Stepping into the Sabbath zone. Thanks for those who are also going in and those who are already in, depending on when you're seeing this. Chalice talk is somewhat like a Sabbath talk. Once again, let me just encourage you, I must, because Chalice Talk is brought to you by the Chalices. So you could definitely order your Chalices today. And remember that the steam and Chalice is also available. And definitely, it will definitely be shipped to you. Contact us, precise at 27 at gmail.com. More about it. Thanks to the Naya Bingi sound, just bringing it down, coming down just a, a bit there. Once again, blessed love to each and everyone, welcoming you again into this zone, into the zone of the tiger's nest. And even at this time, we are in the talk of the chalice talk. And of course, just reminding each and everyone that the moment is with us now. Yes, we are talking about the summer solstice. Of course, you know, we just did, what did we just do? The equinox, the spring equinox. So now the summer solstice is with us. And of course, we're talking about the virtual hike to Green Castle Hill. But this time we're doing it from Thursday the 17th to, to um, Sunday the 20th of June. This is going to be a wonderful session. Those of you who sat with us the previous time, I know you full enjoyed it. Those of you who came with us, um, came with us to Greencastle Hill for the morning hike and the afternoon hike, I know you definitely full enjoyed it, even though you are in Canada, even though you are in England, even though you are in France, you still had a wonderful time with us because we did it virtually. So we are definitely going to be doing it virtually this time around again of course we're going to be having uh, uh historians with us the herbalist was, is will, will be with us we will be returning to the ganja field oh yes we will be returning to the to uh, the marijuana acres of ras freeman establishment marijuana for sure and uh, we'll be showing you how your little plants have been doing since you have seen them the last time those of you who were with us on that previous hike and tour. Trust me, my brothers and sisters, it's a wonderful experience. I mean, as you know, very inexpensive. And remember, we're talking about three days, eh? three days of, of touring with us right here in the Caribbean. Yes, you, you may, not that you cannot be here, but the situation to me is still the same. And as I said the previous time, for my loved ones, I don't want them to be going through no confusion. I, I would believe, you know, actually by the time spring equinox comes around or, or uh, the fall equinox comes around, especially the winter solstice, I would expect that by that time we would be saying, well, come on in, make sure you come and join us and, and whatever the case is. I know so many strange things are happening who can't leave the country unless they have two jabs and who can't come here unless they have how many jabs. And they're speaking about that a lot, but let me not put that in the ear right now. It's all right, we're not giving that no life right now. This is Sabbath moment, getting into the vibes. Like the bingy stuff up, I can't hear. Oh yeah, the bingy still going through. <laughs> but all is well, you know, of course, just contact me, precise at 27 at gmail.com. Precise at 27 at gmail.com or you can call or even WhatsApp 1268-714-1227. And let me say this here. This is very important. I, I'm going to have something special to offer at the end of this program um, for, for, for um, anyone who may want to, if you want to say converse with I, but at the end of the program. You, you'd have to wait. In fact, if you're not here at the end of the program, 
I don't think that is even something that would interest you. And the reason why I'm saying that, I've said this before, I want my loved ones to understand. Anyone can contact me personally. I've always said that. You see my email, priestisaac27 at gmail.com. If a person feels, for one reason or the other, that is, it's me personally they want to say something to, well, you could contact me using such. Remember, this is brought to you by Rastafari Experience Antigua. I just have to let the family understand because a lot of one seem to grow attached in these different things, you know, and we give thanks for such love. But a lot of the information that you may see, you may see a phone number, you may see a WhatsApp number, you may see another, a different email. I always say, because there's, there's several emails, in Instagram page, certain Facebook pages. If you want to speak to me directly and you know it's me you're going to talk to, priestisaac27 at gmail.com. You know, I have business associates, you know, and, you know, we have people that we employ to do things. So it's not necessarily me you're going to get. I'm telling you for sure. So if you are for the business aspect of it, and you want to be a part of the hike and tour coming up for this the um, summer solstice you can email me precise at 27 at gmail.com you can call our whatsapp as you see the information right there for those who are with the whatsapp i mean you're gonna get what you're looking for don't get me wrong you know but if you're trying to find me personally me you want to say something to email me at priestisaac27 at gmail.com and I, I really hope that that will be clear as i said it's all about business uh, and we're into several businesses and i have several business associates so i, I know that you comprehend all right so i'm looking forward for your company there and as i said we are here chalice talk domain um Interesting, eh? T -t 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 Today, I really wanted to speak about, you know, showing respect for the elders as we see the showers coming down. And this is something I've done before in, in the same format that I'm actually going to do it. It's one, is a video I've done maybe about three years ago, but it's just a new day. And interestingly, eh? yesterday, I was on my brother I just uh, channel, YouTube channel. Give thanks to Ras I just uh, mindset channel, and he put up a a video, an ancient video, with the elder Bonajis, and uh, that's Bongo Watu. And I get the impression it was in Shashamani. You should check that video. Eh? You should check that video. And I. I think it's in Shashimani because the time frame and the Honorable Priest Paul was there as well. Um, Barreso... Barreso Bobo. Yeah, um, his name is also Priest Paul Sanchez. Okay, well, you know, well, you know Priest Paul more than me, man. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of thing going on? Cool, he man, you know, like, class, yeah, just, uh, Rastafari, I'm telling you, eh? I would tell him how to be able to something. That's like a surprise there to me, telling you straight. I'm telling you, Charlie's talk. Yeah, but anyway, I'm not even going to go too deep into it. Eh? I'm just highlighting it. Um, and and this, it's it's so layered, you know. I appreciated it. For those of you who've seen it, um, it's a touching video as well. And enough respect. Let me say here, enough respect to the ancient Bonajis, eh? Bongo Wat. Enough, enough, enough respect, I'm telling you. And um, I even give thanks for his clarity i know some ones will listen to it and maybe not say exactly what i say but there's a lot more i would like to say there's it's layered it's layered and even while i was watching it i was saying you know you know there, there's a lot in it that shouldn't just get away but then at the same time i'm saying to myself listen this is a different time now and some of this some of these things is what keep us back in the past you know, straight up but maybe because I'm a journalist, a reporter, I'm a scholar within certain realms and a researcher for sure. 
you know, nothing wrong being a scholar. People think saying you're a scholar is some kind of ego word. No, a scholar means you're a student. If you look at it, you see the word school in scholar. Our students for like our whole school, we call them scholars. And I, I, I'm saying that, well, you know, as, as a researcher, I mean, what, a lot of what Bo, Ras Bonaji is the elder said, you know, it's something to discuss. Um, I think the Honorable Priest Paul handled himself. The little of the video that I got, you know, um, in all full respect. I could definitely see in his onset that he, he, he was a bit hot under the collar. And I think anyone would be. I mean, it was anyone that's a lover of the Honorable King Emmanuel. Because Boney G's was Boney G's. Eh? And I'm telling you, I, I really appreciate seeing that. So anyone who didn't see it. You should go to uh, uh, I just star mindset YouTube channel and observe that video. You know, I, I myself was thinking, as I said, if it's something to go into to the depths, because as I said, at the same time, we have a lot of young ones coming too. And I noticed that around us in general, even right here in Antigua, young ones coming to this to meet the same old bangarang back and forth elders talk, you know? No disrespect to no one, but people that not even around. Real thing. You check. If we the ones that say man they were living us. Because we have to understand the standard that coming out now, you know. This is not the time to be arguing. But can we realistically discuss it? I go repeat it before I continue. It is something that I see needs a nice discussion. That reasoning alone. I don't even think anything like that ever happened and well recorded in that tabernacle there. And the elder saying everything that he said. Mm. Wow. And as I said, the Honorable Priest Paul came and defended the faith. You know, he definitely, I didn't think Priest Paul definitely did not get a chance to express himself. Uh, and his timing was short, but the little nuggets that he dropped, he made it clearly, well, listen, man, I, I hear what you're saying, but. I live with the man too. And definitely sound different than what you put it forward. But uh, interesting. And as I said, the reason why I even brought that up too is that I wanted to speak about respecting the elders. And I want to be clear, it's not because I saw that. I was saying this since a few days prior to this. The respect for the elders. And just happened to see that video with the elder. You know, Priest Paul wasn't an elder as such at the time, but he's surely an elder now. And um, yeah, it, it, it just, as I was watching it, I look at it about three times. Eh? And as, as I was watching it, it just came to me that, hey, interesting that that's the subject. I'm not saying he disrespected the elder at all, for sure, because what I'm going to be speaking of is kind of beyond that. Just, just showing you the vibes. In fact, no, I don't think he did. But the elder thought that he did, though. But again, as I said, that's a different realm. Maybe that discussion shouldn't happen in the public, or maybe it should. Because we should be mature enough to speak of these things without getting into that old-time spirit of who gains who. You know, yeah, I think, I think that's what I'm seeing. We are mature now. We've gone beyond them Togawa that we can now discuss it. Because I would love to discuss what the man was saying, man. Yeah, I was like, for my soul, that was like honey. I know for some other ones, yeah, as, as Elder Bodeji says, a two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. All right. Hey, it's Chalice Talk, eh? That's the far I live. Holy money, well, I. It's last year, John. Rastafari. Okay. I know someone's definitely going to check that out. Yes, I'm sure many ones know the story of we're going to be doing it a little biblical today as well. And that seems to be the trend for the Chalice Talks. So we're just going to follow the spirit. And the we know of the story of King David. And, and David seems to be the trend too, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it's just the spirit. Eh? And King Saul, 
the king of Israel, according to the Bible, considered the first king of Israel. And of course, we know David was anointed by King Samuel, Samuel, the dreadlocks, ancient prophet still, priest-like figure said we, you know, priest said we. Yeah, that's why um, King Emmanuel is actually called uh, King Samuel. Yes, I. So, so the Samuel now, within his own realms, he's the one that baptized King David. You know, you remember the story for sure that King David, father, his father, Jesse, Jesse was the one that Samuel came to and Samuel said, hey, the Mosai said that one of your sons, you know what I mean, is supposed to be the king. Jesse said, yeah, all right. I do have some strapping lads. I could imagine when he went that in, uh, you know, at the scripture, I think the scripture said he said to call him. But whatever the case is, but I just imagine him overlooking David, maybe he himself going for a few and said, excuse me, David, here, I'm, I'm coming. And just pass him and call in the other sons. Come on, come on, we have somebody here that wants to meet you. Uh, not now, David, not now, I'll talk to you later. Come on, come on. <laughs> you know, just bringing it to life. Because that is exactly how the scripture would have put it. When Saul, that's all, when Samuel came, you know, he, he sized up everybody. Strapping, strong, you know, nice set of teeth. Okay. Everybody looks good, you know, Jesse, but the Lord say, none of these are the sons or, or the king, the anointed one. This the, the anointed one that I came to anoint, he's not in this line up here, how much? How many of them were there? About seven of them. Eh? So a good, a good flock. But no, none of them. You sure there's nobody else there? That's what Samuel has him. Nobody else there. And Jesse was like, "Well, I mean, I, 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 there's one in the cradle, but I mean, it can't be him." <laughs> It was not actually in the cradle, but you know, you get what I'm saying. There's a, a little one there. He's watching the sheep. All them time, according to David, he don't kill a lion and a bear. You know, overlook that still. Call him for me. Okay. David, come here. Okay. Make sure you look the man in his face. Okay. So Samuel. Samuel, look. Oh, you young lad. I am blessed, sir. This is the man. <laughs> and David became king of Israel. Well, he didn't become it that, at that time, but he was anointed. So I'm saying that to say that the anointing of the Lord was on David. Samuel was the same man that anointed King Saul. King Saul is before David. King Saul is the first king. When King Saul was king of Israel, David was a young child. So Samuel came and, and anointed David and we read on the story and somehow Saul came in contact with David because Saul was feeling itchy and, and a, a, a funny spirit was interfering with Saul. So he, 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 he called for somebody that was skillful on the harps and the son of Jesse was pulled up. That's David and David would come and lick the kettle for the king and his spirit will come to rest. Light up the chalice, man. Chalice revolution. So, so according to that part of the scripture, because the, the allegory have some different vibes, you know, but I don't even want to break that down unless the spirits will break it down. So really what happened now is that, that, that King Saul, as you would know, kind of fell out of favor with the Most High. He, he, he had a sacrifice when he wasn't supposed to have a sacrifice according to the scripture when Samuel was supposed to come, but he was taking too long. Um, there's something else I think he did. Uh, he had a, a slaughter where he was supposed to kill everyone down to the butterflies and the earthworm. Everything's supposed to go, but he saved the best of the flock and the best of the lamb and he even saved the king. And the Lord was displeased about that. And, and, and then, the, I mean, the earthworm and the butter, that may, I may have been, you know what I mean? Just kind of, right, you know, take it a little. I don't, I don't think it was that bad. 
<laughs> but it was bad. I think it's real bad. Eh? I think some of them scriptures tell you even the creeping and crawling things. Eh? Not supposed to get away when the most high say, hey, everything going. So, so maybe I'm correct. Eh? <laughs> the Bible is very graphic, pardon me there. Mm -hmm. So, so so King Saul kind of fell out and I think that's why the evil spirit was playing with him too. So Samuel showed him, hey man, the Lord have left you, the man. And he has given somebody else the throne. Hey. And David came along and Goliath stand up. And David slew Goliath and lick him down and chop off his head. And Saul said, who is this? Who is this? And he, they brought them to Saul and he said, who are you? And he said, I'm the son of um, Jesse. Now, all this time he done playing the harps for Saul. Read the Bible good. David already playing harps for Saul before Goliath come. <laughs> Read the Bible. <laughs> and yet still now, when Goliath come and he killed Goliath, Saul wanted to know who he. I don't know if when he was playing the harps, he had an orchestra where, you know, he may have been lost within or the time frame. But I'm just saying, you know, the Bible has a very allegorical way of expressing itself, but I don't want to rest on that point. Maybe someday we will rest on that point just to show you the beauty of it because there's a lot of different aspects just to that allegorical story of him asking who he was. It's deep, it's deep, believe it. Just take it for mine. But I want to stick here now. And what I'm going to read, just giving you an idea of uh, where the, the, the jealousy as such it began. Okay. This is the 18th chapter of the first summer from the fifth verse. And David went out whithersoever Saul, Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servant. And it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the woman came out of the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joys, and with instruments of music with a cake. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slewed his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth and the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousands and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from the day, from that day and forward. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul and he prophesied in the midst of the house and David played with his hands as, as at other times. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand. that the evil spirit from God. <laughs> and Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. So even though David is a killer now, captain of the host, he's still coming and playing drums for Saul. Eh? As when he was a little <laughs> yeah real thing and Saul waiting now this is not the first time he he tried to kill David according to this this is the second time I think this is the time he David said no nah, man I, I don't think I can go through this anymore because remember David now was the 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 uh the the best friend of Jonathan and Jonathan is the son of Saul to the point that several times Saul was upset with Jonathan because he believed Jonathan was holding back David from getting slew. Mm -hmm. Even his wife, what's her name? Michael, Michael. That's the wife, as the, uh, the wife of David, 
from Saul, Saul's daughter. She's the same one, if I'm not mistaken, that was telling David that he dancing before the ark all this time his king now. You know, Saul done dead and gone. And, and because of her disrespect of the king, if you know the story, David was dancing before the ark. And she said to his to David that, you know, you have you have expressed your nakedness amongst all the empresses. And David there <laughs> and said whatever he had to say. And according to the Bible, she was barren from such time because of such disrespect unto David. You know. So so she also, before that, also helped David escape from the, the death blow of Saul. And Saul wasn't pleased with her neither. So his own children saw the righteousness in David and assisted David to get out of his hands. So, and just to even seal up this here, and Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was, his, was, was with him and was departed from Saul. Therefore, Saul removed him from him and made him his captain over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. And David behaved himself wisely in all ways. And the Lord was with him. Okay. So, you know, you get a, a good picture there of how the relationship was going between the elder Saul and the young David. Because, again, you have to understand taking him even from the sheepfold, as even the scripture describes God taking David from the sheepfold. In a sense, when he came amongst Saul, it was something similar. David was a young, although he don't kill a lion and a bear, and is he slew Goliath, we understand that. But yet still, he came in amongst the elders, very important. And that will kind of kind of give us an understanding of where we're going here. So first Samuel chapter 24 now, please tiger with me. Thanks, Charlie Stark, you know, in the tiger's nest. And it came to pass when Saul was returned from following the Philistines that it was told him saying, behold, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. And he came to the sheep coats by the way, where was a cave. And Saul went in to cover his feet. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men, and, and to cover his feet, well, I think they have different interpretations of that. But honestly, I think that means that he went to free up his structure, you know what I mean? Like he went to uh, free up his structure. Yeah, clean out his bowels, cover his feet. If it's not that well, uh, from my understanding. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemies into thine hand, that thou mayest do unto him as it shall seem good unto thee. You hear this? Because remember that these people, Saul and his people, was running down David. They say, what? David, we in Gedi? Come on, get 3,000 men going down. I'm going to kill him tonight. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, I got to free up my structure here. <laughs> and, and it says David came into the cave with him. You check it. Yeah, here it is now, hold on. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privily. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto his men, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed. Hope we're taking our notes here, even if it's mental notes. To stretch forth mine hand against him, seeing he is anointed of the Lord. So David stayed his servant with these words and suffered them not to rise 
against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went his way. Feel light. Everything. David also arose after and went out of the cave and cried after Saul, saying, My Lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's word? saying, Behold, David seeketh to hurt thee, or seeketh thy hurt. Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how the Lord hath delivered thee. Today into mine hand in the cave, huh? and some bade me kill you. Kill thee. But my eyes spared thee, and I said, I would not put forth mine hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, he would he call him, my father, see, yea. See the skirt of thy robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe and killed thee not. Know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand, and I have not sinned against thee. Yet thou huntest my soul to take it. The Lord judge between me and thee and the Lord avenge me of thee. But mine hand shall not be upon thee. As said the prophet of the proverb of agents, of the agents, wickedness proceedeth from the wicked but mine hand shall not be upon thee. After whom is the king of Israel come out? Question. After whom doest thou pursue? After a dead dog? After a flea? The Lord therefore be judge and judge between me and thee and see. Aye, aye. <laughs> and plead my cause and deliver me out of thine hand. And it came to pass when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said unto David, Thou art more righteous than I. And it came to pass when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, is this thy voice, my son? David and Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, and before we say what he said to David, we have to comprehend it. It's not act he acted. This may sound strange, but Saul loved David just as he loved his own son. There was a time he would have killed his son because of David. There was a time he would have killed his son because his son ate a bit of honey because of some, you know, uh, what you would call it that day, a, a pack that they made with the most high. And his son knew not about it and tasted the honey. I'm sure you know the story. So, so killing a person for political or, or 
spiritual or religious reasons is no problem in them kind of circumstances here. Is no love loss. When you hear about no love loss, them is the no love loss, you know, for sure. But when, when David referred to Saul as father, it's not no joke. When Saul referred to David as son, it's not a joke. And, and there is a bond. They like how you would love whoever you love. You know, it's the same love. It's really love. So Saul would have really lifted up his voice and wept. When you really see and understand, like, wow, this is really what I'm doing here, man. Ah, I'm sorry, David. I didn't mean to do it. That's really what's happening. So he says now, and he said to David, thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded the evil. Hmm. And thou hast showed this day how that thou hast dwelt well with me. For as much as when the Lord had delivered me into thine hand, thou killest kills, kills me not. That's like, oh, well, <laughs> Shakespeare in old English. Right? For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go away? Therefore the Lord reward thee good for that thou hast done unto me this day and now behold I know well that thou shalt surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thy name swear now therefore unto me by the Lord that thou will not cut off my seed after me and, and thou will not destroy my name out of my father's house and, and David swear and Saul went home and they lived happily ever after no no, <laughs> happily ever after. Yeah. But you already get the vibration here. Let us just knock this here quickly. This is the 26th chapter of 1 Samuel. And the Zephites came unto Saul in uh, Gibeah, saying, does not David hide himself in the hill, in the hill of, uh, of, uh, Hachila, Hachila, but actually no, it's my concentration there. Okay, I was just saying, I hope, I hope I share in the screen. <laughs> That's what really holds me up there a moment ago, but it looks so. Yeah, sometimes that happened. I did a video the other day and yapping, yapping, and what we're talking about, not even on the screen. But anyway, yeah, where, where was he? So did that David hide himself in the hills of Hach, Hachila, which is before... Jeshi, Jeshimon. Then Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph. Having 3,000 chosen men of Israel with him to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. See, it's all, all the, the big vibes, the hippo hip a while ago. He do not forget that. Evil spirit enter Saul again. He just tell David, man, you are a better man than me, no man. You are the man. Look, I come to kill you. You don't do me a thing. And I come to kill you. And while I, you know what I mean, free not myself, you just come and take a little piece of my skirt. And dangle it, then you could have. Eh. You are a, a righteous man, my son. Oh, my. Weep. Oh, no, baby. Yeah, you cry out. David, I show up there, shed some tears. Real father, father, son, love him. Okay. And Saul pitched his in the hill of Halchi, Hachila. That's the right pronoun. That's the right pronoun. Hachila. Hachila. Yeah. Which is before uh, Jeshimon. Jesh, Jeshimon. Jeshimon. By the way. But by the way. By the way, but David abode in the wilderness, and he saw that Saul came after him in the wilderness. David therefore sent out spies and understood that Saul was come in very deep. And David arose and came to the place where Saul had pitched. And David beheld the place where Saul lay. And Abner, the son of Ner, the captain of his host, and Saul lay in the trench. And the people pitched round about him. So you can imagine how that looks. Then answered David on then answered David and said to Ahimelech the Hittite, 
and Abishai, the son of Zer Zeruiah, uh, brother of Joab, saying, who will go down with me to Saul, to the camp? And Abishai said, I will go down with thee. Mm -hmm. So David and Abishai came to the people by night. And behold, Saul, Saul lay sleeping within the trench and, he, and his spear stuck in the ground by his bolster. But Abner and the people lay around about him. Then said Abishai to David, God hath delivered thine, thine enemy into thine hand this day. Now, therefore, let me smite him, I pray thee. Let the spear even to the earth at once. Yeah, I, say, um, I pray thee. With the spear, yeah. <laughs> even to the earth of, at, at once. So much excitement, yeah. And I will not smite him the second time. Yeah, man, when I'm done, you're going to give me a medal. And David said to Abishai, destroy him not. Huh? Yeah, man, what's wrong with you? <laughs> crazy, you crazy. For who can stretch forth his hand? Against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless. David said, furthermore, as the Lord liveth, the Lord shall smite him. For his day shall come to die. For he had for he shall descend into battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should stretch forth my hand against the Lord anointed, but I pray thee, take thou now the spear that is in his bolster and the cruise of water and let us go. So David took the spear and the cruise of water from Saul's bolster. And they got them away, and no man saw it, nor knew it, neither awakened, for they were all asleep. That is real sleep there. Because a deep sleep from far eye was fallen upon them. Then David went over uh, to the other side and stood on the top of a, an anhill. See, anhill. That's what it says here, anhill. Not a hill, afar off. Mm, afar is in Ethiopia. <laughs> a great space being between them. So David went over to the other side and stood on top of a hill afar off, a great distance between them. Good. And David cried to the people and to Abner, the, the son of Ner, say, Answer it, thou not Abner. Huh? Abner, wake up. And Abner answered and said, Who art thou that criest to the king? And David said to Abner, Art not thou the valiant man, a valiant man, question, and who is like to thee in Israel? What's going on here? Wherefore then hast thou not kept thy lord the king? Huh? For there came one to the people in to destroy the king, thy lord. This thing is not good that thou hast done, O Abner. As the, the Lord liveth, ye are worthy to die, because ye have not kept your master, the Lord's anointed. Now hear you. And now see where the king's spear is. And the cruise of water that was at his bolster. Saul waking up here. And Saul knew David's voice and said, is this the voice? Is this thy voice, my son David? And David said, it is my voice, my Lord, O king. And he said, wherefore doeth my Lord thus pursue after his servant? For what have I done or what evil? is in my hand. Now, therefore, I pray thee, let my Lord, the King, hear the words of his servant. If the Lord 
have stirred thee up against me. Let him accept an offering. But if they be the children of men, cursed be they before the Lord, for they have driven me out this day from abiding in the inheritance of the Lord, saying, go serve other gods. Hope I got that correctly. Now, therefore, let not my blood fall to the earth before the face of the Lord. For the king of Israel is come to seek a flea. Same words of him. As when one doeth hunt a partridge in the mountains. Then said Saul, I have sinned. Return, my son David. For I will no more do thee harm. Because my soul was precious in thine eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly. And David answered and said, Behold, the king's spear, and let one of the young men come over and fetch it. Wow. Wow. The Lord render to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord delivereth thee into my hand today, but I would not stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. And, you know, basically the same story, David blessed, Saul blessed, you know, said, blessed be David, and he went back home. But the battle continued. So this is the last chapter now. Chapter 31. First Samuel, we're still in. Let me make sure I, I have this. Uh, all right. Okay. Bam, bam, bam. So what happened to Saul now? Saul basically went into battle. Saul and his sons. And Saul... Uh, against the Philistines, and the battle was hard against the Philistines. I wouldn't read this part here. And here what happened now. The arrows, the archers, were flinging some heavy arrows, and it struck Saul. His sons died prior to that. And Saul told his armor bearer, listen, I can't afford to make these uncircumcised People kill me. So you, armor bearer, kill me. I prefer you kill me because I am going to die. Take me out. And the armor bearer said, no, I cannot do that. And Saul said, give me my sword. And according to the scripture, Saul fell on his own sword. Yeah. And his armor bearer fell on the sword after him. Now, in the first chapter of 2 Samuel, after all of that, see, I didn't even have to read that, but that's how the story go. Now, it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had aboard two days in Ziglag, it came even to pass on the third day that, behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with his clothes rent and earth upon his head. And so it was when he came to David that he fell on the earth and did obedience. And David said unto him, from whence comest thou, question? And he said unto him, out of the camp of Israel, I am escaped. And David said unto him, how went the matter, question? I pray thee, tell me. And he answered that the people are fell from the battle and many of the people are fallen and dead and Saul and Jonathan his son are dead also and David said unto the, the young man that told him how knowest thou that that Saul and Jonathan his son be dead and the young man that told him said uh, as I happened by chance <laughs> he realized coming here now, as I happened by chance upon Mount G uh, Gilboa behold Saul leaned upon his spear, and lo, 
the chariots and the horsemen followed hard after him. I mean, all that may be true. And when I looked behind him, I saw, uh, uh, and when he looked behind him, he saw me and called unto me. And I answered, here I am. And he said unto me, who art thou? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. He said unto me again, stand, I pray thee upon me and slay me. For anguish is come upon me because my life is yet whole in me. So I stood upon him and slew him. Nothing goes on. Not a thing goes on. Who tell him to go say that? So I stood upon him and slew him because I was sure that he could not live after that. You know, I can't make the man suffer so. After that, he was fallen. And I took the crown that was upon his head and the bracelet that was on his arm and I've brought them hither unto my Lord. This is yours, eh? Then David took hold of his clothes and rent them and likewise all the men that were with him. And they mourned and wept and fasted until even for Saul and for Jonathan, his son, and for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel, because they were fallen by the sword. And David said unto the young man that told him, Whence art thou? And he answered, I am the son of a stranger, and I'm a I told you that already. And David said unto him, How wast thou not afraid to stretch forth thine hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? Huh? And David called one of the young men and said, go near and fall upon him. And he smote him that he died. And David said unto him, thy blood, he did it, we don't kill him. <laughs> and David said unto him, thy blood be upon thy head. He's still talking to the man, but he died. You know? <laughs> and David said unto him, thy blood be upon thy head. For thy mouth has testified against thee. He didn't do what he said he did, you know. He said all of that because he thought he would get a blessing from David. Because he killed David. Anyway. He killed the man that tried to kill David. So he said, hey, this is my chance. I have the crown. I have the bracelet. What? And I'm going to tell him, is I killed the man. I make it sound like man. I, I didn't want to do it, but he begged me to. Boy, double blessing. David just go and hold a fast. And when he come out, he said, hey, you the man. Go back and let he go. Now. Just call he give me. <laughs> who are you? You know, you know, maybe if you really told him who he was before. But I, I, I think David didn't really want to know who he was. He, he really wanted to know it's who you, maybe who you think you are. Oh, I'm a, I'm a like guy. No, 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 no. Weren't you afraid? To put your hands against the Lord anointed? Uh, well, let me tell you what I really have. Hey, hey, your mouth has already testified. Hey, come, bring the chains up. One of the key phrases here is the Lord's anointed. Now, David was the Lord's anointed. Eh? Not only was David the Lord's anointed, I don't think it's no argument or no debate. David was a greater uh, or, or, or had a greater anointing than that of Saul. That, I mean, if you understand the story, where there's literal, uh, metaphorical, however you see the story, David was the chosen one in this scenario here. It's all through the Bible. Cain and Abel, there's a chosen one. What if, um, Esau and Jacob, there's a chosen one. So there's always a chosen, it's, it's a chosen book, somebody getting chosen. Even Israel as a people was chosen. It's all about choosing it. The book is a choosing book and who choosing and who you're going to choose. And, and it's always amongst two or a couple of people. And let me choose this one. Go, oh, David was chosen from his brother. So it's all about choosing. So, so that is what we have here in, in, in that sense. So David now, as, as, as a young man, really, 
according to this scripture here, according to our understanding. He as an individual brought into the house of Saul. And Saul himself is the king of Israel. As I said, the anointing of David was greater than that of the anointing of Saul. But yet still, David keep referring to Saul being the anointed of God, even though he, David, did it. Even though he, David, had a bigger blessing than Saul. He didn't see it right for him to stretch his hand against King Saul. Now here it is. David referred to Saul as father. Again, this ain't no joke. Not just Saul alone, you know, even Abner, the son of Ner, who is the captain of the host of the great King Saul. Remember, these are like elders to David. Although David was a man of valent and, and a man of war and all of these different things, he still would have been trained by someone. You comprehend. Someone has to teach him certain you know, certain games, certain skills within the game, I should say. Abner is the captain of the host of the Lord or, or the king. So Abner was like an elder to David as well, just like King Saul. And Abner may be not anointed, but has his own special anointment, if you want to call it that way. So when David looks at these individuals, there's a certain level of not just admiration, but respect for them as his elders, as his fathers, and yet still as the anointed of the Most High. So this is why now, even though they were trying their best to kill David, this was the case here, you know, they're trying their best, their utmost best to take David out. David refused to do them any harm. Even when David was in the cave and he cut the skirt of Saul's robe. Because the skirt, skirt means the, the lower part. That's why, that's why the hem, the hem, the hem. Oh, yeah. That's why uh, even in the 133rd Psalms, it says the beard of Aaron went down to the skirts of his back garments. It's not like a, a skirt, like a woman's skirt. You know? It just means the borders thereof. So what David did, he just cut, you know, this is Charlie's talk, a bit of the, the garment. And hear this. It said that it smote his heart like he felt it. You know how it feels when your heart hit you and like, oh, man, I should do that in the man. Oh, yeah, and them kind of things there. So it hit, it hit his heart. Man. Like he felt it. Like, wow. Mm -mm -mm. What did you do, David? You killed Saul? No, man, I cut off a piece of his clothes. Just to show you the level of respect that he have for a man that is trying to kill him. That he just cut off a piece of his garment and it hurt his heart that he do that to his elder. The Lord's anointed. But he still showed the elder the man, hey, I could have slew you in the cave a while ago. And the elder cried out, oh my, my son, my son, what, what, you, are, you are more righteous than myself. Here I am running to kill you and you could have taken me out and you did it not. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on, Abner, let's go home. Remember he done fling javelin after David several times. He already seek to kill David while he's in his bed. David's wife had to get hay and all sort of little vibes and put it together so it appeared as if there was a man in the bed and the fellas come in stabbing. <laughs> and what's going on? It's a teddy bear, you know? David done gone. So it's not just the cave. And no, it's several times Saul tried to kill him. Javelin. Phew. 
David Duke out of the room. Still come back playing drums for him. Javelin, David Duke out of the room. So now what is happening here now? Several times David could have lost his life to this specific man. I could imagine how many times the Bible hasn't even mentioned where Saul was, was trying to trick or even get David killed. Remember when David was absent from the feast of the new moon and the full moon, David would have, not David, Saul would have strangled Jonathan because he would have asked Jonathan, where is the son of Jesse? And Jonathan would have told him, well, the son of Jesse asked for some special permission to go to, go to Bethlehem to be with his family for the Passover and whatever the case is. And he said, thou fool, don't you understand that he will be your demise? The kingdom will be taken from you. And that's the same thing he told his daughter, making her understand that the kingdom will be taken from her. It will be her demise because of David the king. Now, really now, when you look into this, even when he met them sleeping, as I said, this time now, it was, Abner and the king that was in the position to be slow because the king was asleep and Abner was right next to him. So I bring in again now the science of even Abner, again, a, a, a warlord himself, a field marshal general, someone that David would have respected and, and looked up to. Again, business never personal, you know, EPMD, what's going on here, no love loss as we say, but. Uh, you know, they just consider the man is a threat and for them, they, he just have to get out of the way, you know, and that's just how them, yeah, that's how the cookie crumble as such. But again, even though Saul realized, oh, man, I, I did the wrong thing again, the evil spirit keep coming back, keep returning. And no matter how much times David was in a position where he could have taken Saul out, even when Saul was throwing the javelin, David could have challenged him too. Yeah. But especially at that time, you know, if you follow the storyline, David himself may have been saying, oh, wait, what are really going on with this man? But then as we proceed and proceed, we see that, no, nah, man, this man, something wrong. And you understand his agenda. So it's just best you leave because that's what happened, eh? It was that David understood his agenda and he was out to kill David. And David said, no, nah, man, I got to take about 600 men and get out of here. And he was in the wilderness for a long time. And that's a very symbolic thing. They have been in the wilderness. All them messiahs go in the wilderness for a time. Yeah, and David is one of them too. If you understand the science, a man after the heart of God. I mean, yeah. So, uh, so even though, he was, his back was against the wall, literally, many times. He refused to touch the Lord's anointing. Now, hear this now, but, but hear this. Hear this. Even when someone come to David now saying, hey, here what's going on here. I know that this man trying to kill you for a long time. Mm. I was in the battle and the man there, boy, he was ready to, Conk out. And I was right there and he said, hey, listen, big man, kill me. I prefer you kill me than the uncircumcised kill me. And I, I didn't want to kill him, but yo, that's what the king say. And he said, hey, when you don't kill me, carry the crown and this to David. No, he had a thing he put in all of that. <laughs> Maybe he said it and it wasn't written. Got him, I was on a line spree. Thinking that he would have been rewarded by David. For, for killing King Saul, his enemy, who tried to kill him. That's the point. And everybody could see that, nah, man, Saul really going out of his way to kill David. So everybody knows Saul wanted to kill David. Everybody, it's not no secret. It's not no secret. So David has to be happy that I slew his enemy. And just in case he vexed, I'm making him know that, hey, no, no, it's not like I run up on him and kill the man. The man was dying anyway. He would have died. But, you know, he didn't want his shame to go to the, the Philistines. You understand? So, I mean, it's like a favor I do the man. Eh? David say, your mouth has testified. You know, there are people 
that don't talk to their mothers, that people that don't talk to their father. Because maybe they embarrass them in the crowd sometime ago. Maybe they were a bit harsh on them when they were children, you know. You know, who feels it knows, eh? Because sometimes it's very hard to speak of another person's situation. But I know someone that say already he had to back some shot uh, behind his old lady. I said, like, what? <laughs> it's like, what can we talking? <laughs> A real thing. And don't even try to think why he would have to do that. I, I, that's, the conversation is not even relevant right now. Because the point I'm making it is that, you know, people do hurt people, you know. For sure, people do hurt people. And um, from the simplest of ways, even with, a, even with a word, even with a word, someone could hurt you. Even with a word, a statement, a, 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 an action, something hurt you, scar you, a behavior, a lack of action, hurt you and scar you, something that you'd carry for life. And again, you can't speak for what you don't know. But I do know that in some of these cases, sometimes a person can look at themselves and say, hey, I have to be the adult here, you know? There's certain times that you yourself have to say, listen, you know what she did was really wrong. You know? But that's my mother, man. Child. Let me give her a call. Of course. What kind of man? That's your mother who be here for nine months. Now, listen, I'm bringing that up to equate it to what David went through. Now, although King Saul wasn't his father, and even, even worse, King Saul wasn't his father, but he was like a father to David. King Saul was trying to kill David, you know, kill him, kill him, kill him, not draw off money off of the bank account and didn't tell him nothing. Oh, he hit my car and carry it to the body man and fix it before I come home. He think I didn't see that. He think I didn't see that. That's why I'm not talking to him. That's not what Saul did, David. Saul attempted to kill him. He took 3,000 men to find David wherever he is. Not just to kill him alone, eh? to kill whoever with him, trying to help him and trying to defend him. Is war we come for. More than once he came to. Any chance he get, he come looking for David, his son. And David just deal with this man with pure respect and humility every time. To the point when he hear somebody disrespects all, he ready to crack his neck real thing and that is the same attitude I and i must have even as it relates to our elders okay yeah sometimes you know the elders would pass the place to yeah nobody perfect and really pass the place but concentrate and meditate one more time saul's mission was not to pass his place Saul was ready to murder David and he tried on several occasions. And although David could have killed him too, he stepped back and showed him. And again, the love was still there. 
Because remember, you know, even in Africa, in certain congregations, you can't just get up and talk unless you get permission from the elders to speak. It don't mean that the elders are Mr. Perfect. And, and, and like they know everything, the elders know the way, then the youth have a strength. And those of us that are still youth and elders, this is power time for us. But we have to show enough respect to our elders. Because as far as I know, none of them tried to kill me yet. <laughs> you understand? They are the Lord's anointed. And even if you think you are the anointed as well, because you are. I mean, what do you think? We are anointed. That's why we call each other honorable. You know, people say, why do you think you're so honorable? Me? We're all honorable. Honorable priest Paul was saying that in the video. Because, you know, Ras Bonajis didn't want him to call him honorable. Bonajis said, I don't want none. No, call me my Lord. Bonajis give him a hard time to talk. <laughs> and priest Paul was saying, honorable priest Paul was saying, but my Lord, we're all in all of us in here, honorable. And that's what it is. But not because you honorable or you think you're honorable times too. You can kill or even disrespect this other honorable that you believe you somehow. Because you get a vision. Because enough of us out there just talks. And I, I, I know enough people have these vibes, you know, like if, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't get the vision, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, even if you get the vision, you have to still know how to move through the earth. Let's take the example of the emperor. A man will tell you the emperor is the almighty God. Well, for the Almighty God, he's quite humble with it. Eh? Me tell you, for the Almighty God, very, very, very humble with it. So, I honestly believe if you carry this understanding, this story, this expression here today, if you carry it in your heart, especially as it relates to our elders, you know, it, it would formulate even a new culture. You know, because even our elders literally need help too. Or we, we should have more institutions that cater for our elders in general. You know, just like how you take care of your children, it is because you love them. So we have to cultivate that love for our elders. We love them, you know, but the, the, the Babylon does a thing to you where you don't have time to cultivate love that you have. Yeah. We'll all be elders one day, said we. Yeah. So give thanks, man. Because, I mean, if our elders not trying to kill us like Saul, and David can deal with Saul with so much love, the Lord's anointed to the point that when you say anything about Saul, he's ready to chop off your head. What say us who have elders that have really showed us the way? You know, even if you might have a little snuggles, ah, oh boy, you might have money. Well, it's all right. It's all right. I want still have to respect the elders. Why? Because they are the Lord's anointed. Holy money will eyes. Last year. That's the fact. I give thanks for such meditation. Eh? We got a little bingy here. Yeah? The chalice talk. Oh, yeah. So I said, uh, so remember, make sure you get your channel. I said I had a special um, announcement as such. So <clears throat> just give me a moment there. No, we are sealed up real already, but just going to uh, seal up with a little nah, bingy sound. So, so what we are offering, my family, give thanks to the life giver and the keep of life. And of course, remember our international homeschool program for the young ones, definitely, as we offer astronomy and African history and heritage, definitely something that I'm sure you all will delight in and, and something that your children and yourself would, would benefit from. 
um, our international homeschool classes. Once you contact me, I will give you more information as it relates to such. Now, what we are doing, uh, first, let me be clear here, and I'm going to mention this a few times in a few other programs before I just leave it where it is. Now, my official title um, as a priest outside of, su of such, I am an independent educator. That is really what I am. I'm telling you, I'm an independent educator. Yes, I am a radio announcer, I'm a lecturer, and these different things, but I'm an independent educator officially. Now, that is why I always say I do not style myself as many different things that people would style me as a, um, like a motivator, uh, well, maybe a counselor, because I, I I am a child counselor. I would I would agree with that one day as well. I do that. Uh, but the point I'm really getting at is that over the years, eh, I just wanted to get this good. Over the years, because of our expression, obviously, many of you and many ones in general would obviously reach out to us for different reasons across the board. I mean, across the board. And many times, ones are reaching out looking for an answer to something. So when I say across the board, eh, I mean people, whether it's marriage counseling or spiritual matters, or biblical matters, ones want understanding on religious concepts, and, uh, how to motivate themselves. And, and listen, so I'm telling so many different things. I'm just showing you that we have come across over the years now as you could see i i made uh, at, the, at the beginning of the program i clearly showed exactly how you can contact me personally without going around a person may say well i don't have no email people will tell you that well listen no offense eh? is you want to contact me eh? So that is, that is the mode I have available for direct contact with me at the moment. Now, the thing is, ones would leave messages, I would say pages long, expressing whatever it is they're expressing, that one may have a dream and they're giving you the dream in layout. And, and I'm telling you, I'm a genuine person. Eh? What you see here ain't no fluff, you know? If it's yeah, is yeah. If it's nay, is nay. And I honestly, I'm telling you the truth. Just get me straight. I honestly try my best to pay attention to anyone that reach out to me. Because if I was reaching out to someone, I would want them to pay attention to me. You know, no matter how busy I may think they are. Um, but yet still, obviously, I would have to. <laughs> I would have to um have some sort of understanding that depending on who i'm trying to reach that man hey man he or she it is busy busy people and i'm telling you you know yeah we definitely do a lot and it's not all times that we can even sit and read so many things and then to respond because it's a line you know and a lot of ones reach out with different reasons some people just reach out to show love not that they don't necessarily want to, you know, to interpret their dream or whatever. Now, this is the thing. I don't label myself as no dream interpreter. This is, the, my, this is my point. Neither a marriage counselor. Um, and, you know, even that, I never said I'm a spiritual master. I never said none of these things. I'm an independent educator. No, I'm not saying that to ward off anyone. Because straight off, eh, there's a reason why people would approach me on all, all of these different matters. Because they would see and they would have listened to me and they would believe with good reasoning to believe that I could handle some of these matters. And to be honest, I can. I honestly can. But I don't style myself as that. And I, I would never do it at the moment as none of them things. And reading stars and my when you were born and so. So even in those cases, there are people that I would even say, well, listen, I know this person here. You could talk to him. Well, you see this person here, you could talk to her. You know, some people have other domestic issues. I, I, I have uh, people in different parts of, of the world that deal with these things and say, hey, where you are? 
maybe in New York. Yeah, man, this sister over here, she deals with a lot of that. She's a lawyer and whatever the case is, so they're even links. I just, I'm trying to show you how we're creating a network here because I give thanks for all those who show love and uh, I, I would like to really give back properly, genuinely to that expression of love that is being shown. So what I'm going to do now Listen to me good. This is really the punchline. Listen to me good. If an individual genuinely believes that they want to reach out to me and have a proper discussion, I am setting aside. This may seem minimal and it's minimal and it may grow depending on the demand. But I'm setting aside one hour every Wednesday evening my time between seven and eight follow me good and i'm going to divide that hour you may be saying wow into four 15 minute periods and within that four 15 minute period i will entertain four individuals now and i will entertain them via the zoom platform so we could speak properly as it relates to whatever it is that you are reaching out to me for. Now, this is a very serious thing, you know. You could you could uh, you could equate it to a, cons a, a consultation. This is not anything I'm charging nobody for. There's no money involved in this, you know. Nothing at all. Nothing at all like that. You want to talk to the priest, even if you just want to bless, I will take that too. But listen to me. You'd have to email me. You'd have to let me know who you are and you'd have to explain properly why it is you want to reason with me. I will take the time to read that for sure. And it's not as if I'm picking the best or nothing. They're going as you come, your opportunity is there. There's nobody I'm going to turn away. Something have to be totally off there for me to say, no man, I can't entertain this thing here. You understand what I'm saying? So just be genuine. My name is so-and-so. And this is why I would like to reach out to you. So the first four will obviously be the first four. And the next four, we'll have to wait for the next week. You know, until if for some reason we think we could apply next hour. Because our time is, we our, my time, and you hear me speak all the time about it. How I set myself is, is in slots of time. I mean, I don't always run on the track correctly you know, but at least i have a template that i work with you know, so that's what it is so it's going to be a 15 minute pe reason that's a good time i can sit and hear exactly what you're saying and give me a chance to say what i say and um maybe we can move on from there then you come off and then someone else come in and get their 15 minutes and they move off and go because again some of you would know that you are definitely trying to contact me uh, you know, as I said, through some of these other ways you see here, I've explained that before. And yes, some of you have genuine concerns I wouldn't mind addressing. And I mean, we're brothers and sisters, I'm here. I could give that moment. And it's just for those who want it. I don't see nothing wrong, but just keep it on the standard that I ask. Just let me know who you are and exactly what you want to and, and even if it's just you know you want you and your family especially if you're involved to it to, to talk to the priest man I, i'll do that man that is all that is blessed you know so definitely give thanks for the life giver and the keep of life give thanks for the chalice talk enough respect today's teachers day to it mm. appreciation oh that's how you go you always have the thing Right on target for me. Give thanks for the honorable prince and princess. Give thanks for all those keeping the Sabbath hour. Yeah, give thanks for the chalice talk. Yeah, holy man, well I Rastafari. 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 Rastafari.